Yeah. Back. Back at it like a good snack habit, man. Good snack habit. Watermelon, hey. grapes, and bananas. Yeah. I like that. That's that good. That's a good fruit bowl. And some nuts. Hey, so we got Thomas Sowell <laughs> on here. Facts about Africa's geography never taught in school. Let's go. Ooh, that sound like yeah. just the title of that sound like yeah. something good. Being much larger than the continent of Europe, Hold its on. coastline is shorter than the European coastline. Indeed, shorter than the coastline of any other continent, even though Africa is second only to Asia in size. This anomaly reflects Africa's lack of the numerous coastal indentations which form natural harbors in Europe, providing places where ships can dock, sheltered from the what rough waters here? of the open seas. It just went right thereby in, thereby enabling it? European. But I'm saying, it's like. Seems extra big. Is that how it's supposed That's to be? That's how I look. Oh, okay. It just kind of went in on the information. I, was, I wasn't ready. Um, but you got my armrest. Thank you. Why are you so jealous? One of the remarkable facts about the African continent is that, despite being much larger than the continent of Europe, its coastline is shorter than the European coastline. Indeed, shorter than the coastline of any other continent even though Africa is second only to Asia in size. Mm. This anomaly reflects Africa's lack of the numerous coastal indentations which form natural harbors in Europe, providing places where ships can dock, sheltered from the rough waters of the open seas, thereby enabling European countries to become maritime nations early in their history. In addition to a dearth of harbors, parts of sub-Saharan Africa have shallow coastal waters, so that maritime trade has often had to be conducted by the costly method of having ships anchor offshore, with their cargoes being unloaded onto smaller vessels which could then make their way to land through these shallow waters. Africans have generally not been seafaring peoples, except in the Mediterranean or in parts of East Africa where these geographic constraints have not been as severe. Much of Africa, and especially sub-Saharan Africa, has developed without the benefits of a large maritime trade and the consequent stimulus of economic and cultural interchanges on a large scale with various and disparate peoples. While there has been for centuries some trade between sub-Saharan Africa and Europe, or with the peoples of North Africa and the Middle East, international trade has generally played a relatively smaller part in the total trade of Africa as compared to other continents, mm -hmm. not only because of a dearth of harbors, but also because of a dearth of navigable rivers reaching into the interior of the continent from the sea. Okay. River mouths opening into the sea have been blocked by sandbars in some places, and in other places the few good harbors have been connected to hinterlands that were not very productive, and so have had little to offer in trade. Thin coastal plains, averaging only twenty miles in width and often backed by steep escarpments, have likewise provided little basis for large-scale international trade, even where other conditions might permit it. Low and irregular rainfall over many parts of Africa fill rivers and streams to a navigable depth only intermittently, and even when filled, many rivers and streams are navigable only by smaller boats or barges, not ocean-going vessels. Where the volume of water is sufficient for navigation by sizable vessels, the many rapids and waterfalls yeah, of Africa still impede international wow. trade. Wow. The Zaire River, for example, is 2,900 miles long and mm -hmm. has a volume of water second only to that of the Amazon. Wow. But its rapids and waterfalls near the sea prevent ocean-going ships from reaching inland. Mm -hmm. Thus, the role played by other great rivers of the world in facilitating the development of ports that became great cities contributing to the economic and cultural development Good of the surrounding lands and peoples, wow. was denied the Zaire by the intractable facts of geography. I know, I saw that. Nor is the Zaire unique among Africa's rivers. No river in sub-Saharan Africa reaches from the open sea to deep into the interior. On the Mediterranean coast, only the Nile reaches far inland. Mm -hmm. Significantly, the Nile spawned the most famous of the civilizations developed on the African continent, right. as well as the two largest cities on the continent, Cairo and Alexandria. Cairo. Except for the Nile, Africa's rivers that are even seasonally navigable tend to be concentrated in equatorial West Africa, which has produced larger and more advanced societies 
than in many other tropical regions of the continent. Mm. In short, the peoples of Africa, like the peoples of Europe and Asia, tended to develop urban centers and larger cultural universes around navigable waterways. Mm. There have simply been far fewer of them in Africa, which has been and remains the world's least urbanized continent. Oh. Among the relatively few things which have had sufficiently concentrated value in a relatively small physical size so as to be able to repay the high costs of transport from Africa have historically been gold, ivory, and slaves. All three became major exports. Mm. The coast of what is now Nigeria became known as the Slave Coast, just as the coast of neighboring Ghana to the west was called the Gold Coast, mm. and that west of Ghana was, and still is, called the Ivory Coast. One indicator of differences in access to waterways is that, while more than a third of Europe's landmass consists of islands and peninsulas, only 2% of Africa's landmass consists of islands and peninsulas. Such disparities in access to waterways are accentuated when the navigability of these waterways is also taken into account. Even the Niger River, the heart of a great river system in West Africa, draining an area nearly twice the size of Texas, is not navigable everywhere by large vessels, and is not navigable at all in some places because of rapids. At the height of the rainy season, the Niger may become a twenty-mile-wide moving lake, mm. but during the dry season, the average depth of the Niger can in places fall below four meters. Despite its serious limitations, the Niger compares favorably with other African rivers with even more serious limitations. The Niger has been characterized as the easiest to navigate in all of tropical Africa. Wow. Navigating the Niger's chief tributary, the Benue River, for example, has been more problematical. Because of seasonal rainfall patterns, the upper Benue has been navigable only two months of the year, leading to hectic and complicated shipping patterns. If they let the craft stay up the Benue a day too long, the vessels will be stuck on sandbars for ten months. Mm. Oh, Yet, if through sucks. caution or misinformation they withdraw the fleet too soon, much valuable merchandise is left behind and can only be evacuated by land at much greater cost. Dang. The first boats to go in are the commercial canoes, then follow the larger craft, and finally, when there is sufficient water... No, I, I mean, I didn't know any of this. And I'm trying to think, was any of this information ever taught to me, like, in college when I was doing African American uh African American history. Oh, don't even worry about it, baby. Come on. Let's keep going. <laughs> I'm just this is Lokocha, so interesting. The largest power craft and their barges sail up the river as fast as possible. Towards the end of the short season, the large craft have to come out first because of the fall in the level of the water. The medium sized craft follow and the small canoes may continue for some time evacuating small quantities of produce. Mm -hmm. Drastic changes in water level are common in other West African rivers and streams. The Senegal River has been characterized as precariously navigable, and only during some months at that. Like the Niger, the Senegal is not only subject to large seasonal changes in water flow, but also contains rocks and rapids. In East Africa, such rivers as the Zambezi are navigable only for relatively short stretches. Mm. One reason for the drastic seasonal Look changes in water levels in African rivers is that tropical Africa is one of the uh. few large regions of the world without a single mountain range to collect snow, really? whose yeah. later melting would supplement rainfall in maintaining the flow of streams and rivers. Wow. Rivers in tropical Africa are wholly dependent on rainfall, and that rainfall is itself highly undependable not only from one season to another, but also from one year to the next. Mm. The term navigable can, of course, mean many things. In some of the rivers of Angola, for example, it means navigable by boats requiring no more than eight feet of water, and in parts of West Africa during the dry season, even the Niger will carry barges weighing no more than eight tons. By contrast, ships weighing 10,000 tons can go hundreds of miles up the Yangtze River in China, and smaller vessels another thousand miles beyond that. Aircraft carriers can go up the Hudson River and dock at a pier in mid-Manhattan. Wow, Navigable cool rivers in Africa is. seldom mean anything approaching that. Mm. Even the Nile was unable to handle the largest vessels in Roman times. Wow. Were you trying to say something? No, I, um, 
It's interesting. I'm just listening. I don't know what to comment on. I'm just, it's just like really just taking it in. Moreover, because so much of tropical Africa consists of high plateaus, almost the entire continent is more than 1,000 feet above sea level, and half the continent is more than 2,500 feet above sea level, African rivers must plunge greater vertical distances to reach the sea, making them less navigable en route. Mm. While the Amazon River falls only about 20 feet during its last 500 miles to the sea, Ooh, the Zaire River drops about 1,000 feet. To Could you imagine being in those waters? What, in those waters? I feel like that, that's them dangerous. That's you see a, the real anacondas? I know. The one, Creepy. That one, if we both stand together, we are uh, the width of we the, we the width of one. Yes. 150 miles as it approaches the sea. As a geographer has put it, the African continent is cursed with a mesa form, which converts nearly every river into a plunging torrent. Mm, that's However scary. impenetrable much of the interior of sub-Saharan Africa may have been to large, ocean-going ships, the continent's coastal waters have been plied by smaller boats, which could and did go inland as well, being unloaded and carried around waterfalls. Shipments from ocean-going vessels could also be loaded onto smaller craft for transportation into the interior on rivers. Local waterborne traffic between inland locations was likewise possible by carrying boats and their cargoes around rapids and waterfalls. Sometimes these boats and cargoes were carried from one river to another, thereby expanding the reach of commerce. For example, an overland route requiring 25 days of porterage on land connected the Niger and the Senegal rivers in centuries past. Come on now, lock in that net now. You've I been know, going, like, been is it that at them heavy? Ten minutes. Moreover, even rivers beset with cascades and waterfalls may have navigable stretches that add up to considerable distances, mm. hundreds of miles on the Senegal and more than 1,500 on the Zaire even though these are not continuous distances. Thus, the various regions of Africa were not hermetically sealed off from one another or from the outside world, but both the volume and the variety of trade, as well as the distances involved, were nevertheless severely curtailed in comparison with more geographically fortunate regions of the world, where heavy and bulky cargoes of coal, ores, and grain could be shipped long distances in continuous river and ocean voyages. A late twentieth-century comparison of the transportation costs of grain in several Asian and African nations found that these transport costs were a higher proportion of the total price paid for grain by consumers in Africa. Hmm. Moreover, such statistics do not capture the effect of transport costs on grain that was never shipped in the first place, precisely because higher shipping costs would have made it prohibitively expensive. Okay. Contemporary transport costs also cannot capture the handicaps created by even higher transport costs in Africa before many of the transportation advances from the rest of the world were introduced in the 19th and early 20th centuries and before African harbors could be dredged by modern European equipment and Western railroads built. So it's like... He's talking about how a lot of the rivers in Africa are in that you that you can't navigate them. Inadequate, I guess inadequate, yeah, not inadequate, but you can't not in that inadequate. That's what I'm saying. They're not inadequate. They're not adequate for travel. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah, it's like wow, the yeah. currents and the and the waves are just like you liable. You liable to go out there and get get stuck on a sand dune that it you know it didn't dry up on you. You know what I'm saying? It, he said because then he said at one point. Maybe like only eight feet or something like that. Like, so I guess it could be from the water being low to being the currents and stuff being and he said certain that's, ships. That's why certain things are underdeveloped. He said he was saying because you can't get a lot of ships in and, and out. Wow, so interesting. Did not know that. Me either. And you know the way society has portrayed it is always the starving kids yeah. in Africa that need to be With the flies. Right. That need to be fed. That's mm -hmm. what you. That's what you learn. That's what you learn in school. Right. Wow. Lies. While it is true, as an historian has said, that a considerable Long portion Beach. of West no, Africa was part of a hydrographic system that was ultimately connected to the Atlantic, the limitations of that system are a part of the story, 
that cannot be omitted without serious distortion. Ship, ship Moreover, yards. the distances between the interior hinterlands and the open seas are greater in Africa than in Europe, for example, while the means of covering those distances are much more limited by geography in Africa. In Europe, no part of the continent outside of Russia is more than 500 miles from the sea, but a substantial part of tropical Africa is more than 500 miles from the sea, and a portion is more than 1,000 miles from the sea. Only Asia has a larger interior area remote from the sea, though Asia has more navigable rivers connecting its interior with the coast. The geographical positions of African rivers must also be taken into account. Okay. Although the Niger River originates just 200 miles from the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. it circles far inland before eventually turning back toward the sea and covers 2,600 miles before actually reaching the ocean. Mm. In general, the tenuous connection of the African interior with the sea has been one of the major geographical barriers to the economic, cultural, and political development of the continent south of the Sahara. So basically, wow. I feel like if you had better access ways, then it would be way more, even way more developed, and especially a lot of countries and actors, uh, because they can't get through certain spaces, so can't get you can't get the goods, you can't a get the things. A lot of countries, and what is that word you said? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a lot of countries in something. I missed it. I'm feel like I'm. I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. I want to make I'm sure I. Like Mark now. I, I want to make sure I understand what you say clearly. Deuteronomy. Stop it. Leave him alone. That is so interesting. Land transportation in large regions of sub-Saharan Africa has also been made more difficult because of the prevalence of the tsetse fly which has carried a fatal sickness that has affected animals as well Just as human beings flies, and made the use of... You had that one fly. Tsetse. It's yeah, called a tsetse. you like this. You're like, oh, Ooh, fly bit me. Didn't know. Stop it. Tsetse fly. OMG. Black animals and draft animals impracticable in many places. Denied this aid to land transportation, Africans often carried bundles on their heads in colorful caravans that were reflections of the bleak alternatives left to them without the help of either the waterways or the animal power available to other peoples on other continents. Mm. Expensive transportation provided by human beings limited what could be carried, how far it could be carried, and yep. how fast. Yep. In addition to the physical limitations, there were narrower limits imposed by economics as to what items contained enough value in a relatively small space to repay the costs of this expensive method of transport. The lack of animals' muscle power in tropical Africa has been felt not only in transportation, but also in farming. A dearth of draft animals in farming often meant not only a loss of muscle power, but also a dearth of fertilizer. The latter has been especially important in those parts of the continent where soils have been very much in need of fertilizer because their low nutrient content and proneness to erosion meant that their fertility was easily exhausted by cultivation. He is so Rainfall jealous. patterns in parts of Africa, long dry spells followed by torrential downpours, increase erosion since dry, baked soil is more easily washed away. Moreover, these torrential tropical downpours tend to leach the nutrients from the soil in Africa, as in many other tropical regions. Finally, the tropics provide a disease environment in which many more deadly diseases may flourish than in temperate zones mm -hmm. or in mountainous tropical regions that have more temperate climates because of their heights. For example, 90% of all deaths from malaria in the world occur in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. Even a listing of individual geographical disadvantages in Africa may understate the handicap they represent in combination. Mm. For example, the problem of poor water transportation, while serious in itself, is still more serious in combination with poor land transportation across much difficult terrain without the aid of pack animals. Mm. The highly variable rainfall patterns become more serious in view of where the rain falls. A geographical study of Africa found plenty of water available where it cannot be used, mm. and a scarcity where it is most needed. Mm. Not oh. all parts of sub-Saharan Africa have suffered all these disabilities simultaneously. Wow. However, the fragile fertility in some regions of tropical Africa has meant that a given territory would not permanently feed people at a given location. And Such a rich continent. However, it 
lacks the accessibility to be able to expand for the people in the certain regions that need it. You don't have your billionaires and people coming together to, to invest. Tap in. Right? No, they want to keep. Yeah. Yeah. Keep let me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Focus. Turn meant that those people had to move on every few years to find new land that would feed them, wow. while the land they left behind recovered its fertility. Therefore, whole societies had to be mobile, foregoing mm -hmm. the opportunities to build territorially based communities with permanent structures, wow. such as other Africans built in more geographically favored parts of the continent, and which were common in Europe, Asia, and the Western Hemisphere. The provincialism of isolated peoples has not been peculiar to Africa. What has been peculiar to Africa are the geographic barriers to mobility that have pervaded vast areas below the Sahara. Waterways extend the boundaries of cultural interchange, but in much of sub-Saharan Africa they did not extend those cultural boundaries very far. Like other places relatively isolated from broader cultural developments, the Scottish Highlands, parts of the Balkans, or the South Sea Islands, for example, much of sub-Saharan Africa tended to lag behind the technological, organizational, and economic progress in other parts of the world. Mm. A lack of literacy throughout most of sub-Saharan Africa further limited both internal development and the stimulus of contacts with distant times and places via the written word. While similar retardation afflicted particular parts of Europe or Asia or isolated island communities around the world, in Africa, such, such cultural isolation characterized wide areas and many peoples. The degree of these cultural handicaps has varied in different parts of the continent well, and has changed over know. time. Railroads, motor transport, and airplanes have all added to transportation possibilities, and electronic communication media from cheap radios to television have penetrated cultural isolation. But all this has happened within a recent minute fraction of human history, mm. long after great cultural differences had developed among peoples with geographically restricted cultures and between them and others with more ample access to wider cultural worlds. Okay. Moreover, even in modern times, the sharp changes in altitude of the African landscape continued to make both roads and railroads difficult to build. Mm. The rail line from Djibouti to Addis Ababa, for example, rises more than 2,000 feet in its first 60 miles and more than 4,600 feet in its last 180 miles. And in Djibouti. Given the multiple and formidable geographical obstacles to its economic and cultural development, Africa's poverty is hardly surprising. This poverty Access. over much of sub-Saharan Africa is shown in many ways. Lower incomes per capita are an obvious indicator though the complexities of international exchange rates make these statistics questionable as measures of relative standards of living. However, when the monetary value of output per capita in Nigeria is less than 2% of that in the United States, and in Tanzania less than 1%, that clearly cannot all be due to exchange rates. A more meaningful picture of differences in living standards is that average life expectancies are typically more than 70 years in Europe, Australia, the United States, Canada, and Japan, while average life expectancies in sub-Saharan Africa tend to be in the 50s or even the 40s. Really? Moreover, even these life expectancies in Africa have been achieved only with the help of medical and public health measures originating elsewhere in the world. Oh. Within this general picture of lagging economic development okay. in much of Africa, there have been historic and continuing variations in economic development and political organization so among the various regions of the continent. One of the more fortunate regions of sub-Saharan Africa, from various perspectives, has been equatorial West Africa, what is today Nigeria, Ghana, and their neighboring states. Okay. This region has some of the continent's more fertile soil, mm. ample rainfall, and the Niger River system. Makes sense. Here, some of the larger African kingdoms arose. However, even in this relatively more favored region of Africa, the states and even empires that arose were often small by world standards. Mm. The Oyo Empire, in what is today Nigeria, covered an estimated 150,000 square kilometers, which is smaller than the American state of Colorado. The Songhai Empire, which included the rich river valleys of the central and western Sudan, was about the size of France, which is to say, smaller than Texas. 
Yet these were huge states by African standards, since most Africans lived in polities only a fraction as large, with national populations no larger than the populations of cities or even towns. You ask me mm -mm. Oh. The rest of the world. In Africa, as in other parts of the world, those peoples who were more fortunate often used their advantages to subjugate others. In West Africa, this subjugation took the form both of conquest and of enslavement of fellow Africans. Across the Sahara, in North Africa, more favorable geographic conditions, including harbors on the Mediterranean, also led to larger and more advanced societies. These, too, used their advantages to subjugate and enslave sub-Saharan Africans. In East Africa, some of the more geographically favored areas included harbors, such as the large natural harbor on the offshore island of Zanzibar and such mainland ports as Mombasa and Kilwa. All three became major centers for the trading and shipment of slaves, usually captured from less fortunate inland tribes. Here the enslavers were typically either Arabs or people of mixed Arab and African ancestry and culture, known as Swahilis. Okay. Oh, that's a good one. An honest history of the progressive era, the eugenics movement. I would like to see that one. Yeah, that might be good. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sanger. How, how it all started. Okay, so that, yeah, now, was, that was a lot I did not know. And I, I used to always wonder why some places thrived and a lot of places didn't, didn't. is because there was no access and we no were, water access exactly or even ability to be able to get in there to, de to be able to develop the land because yep. the rivers were were so rampant yep. or yep. so low you couldn't even yep. you know travel it that is so interesting because yep. in my mind i'm thinking that is getting in there with the water it's just that they're poor they're not able to get over there nobody wants to help them but nope, they can't get in there have, wow that is so interesting that's why i like i love learning new things because your so stuff because somebody know. have to come in with a massive amount of money to come in and because they're gonna have to fly and then go plane. down yep yep you have to come in with an absorbent. But there are rich, there are multi millionaires right and there. billionaires over in the country that can do that. It's lots of, and as a matter of fact, if you pull up the top billionaires, you're going to get oh, most, yeah. m more, it's more um, African billionaires than black than it is exactly. American black billionaires. Exactly. So that's what I was getting. I was like, wow, but they don't care enough to try to make that happen there. So, Man. but I never knew. Now we knew it's not just because somebody's poor, it's just you can't get in there to get development. No, this is something I know I didn't learn in school. Definitely not. No, because this would have given you a definitely a sense of pride as a young person. Yeah, and not just think, you know, just poor them. Right. Just being poor. Wow. I know. Wow. Okay. Education. This was good, guys. Education for us and possible education for you. I hope you enjoyed this and um, we're going to keep doing them. Like, comment, subscribe, don't take a nose dive in the comment section below if you want some more. And join our lives, guys. We just did a fabulous live. It's going to be up shortly. Fabulous, but guys. Join our live. Join our live. We're going to be doing giveaways only on the lives. And we, have, we, have, we enjoy having great conversations with you guys at Hop On. It's pretty dope. Yeah. Yep. Bye bye. See you in the next one. Love you guys too. Bye.